So in this video, we're going to start to discuss the idea of functions in assembly. And specifically, we're just going to take a look at how we can call and return to a location using these functions. So we're not going to dive into a huge amount of detail. I want to give you sort of the higher level functional flow of things. And the purpose of doing this is that, well, functions tend to be very complicated. A lot of people approach this by showing you the full picture immediately, and we start getting into all these complicated register interactions, and it's very hard to understand. So I want to break it down into smaller pieces so that it's a lot easier for you to be able to grasp every single individual concept, and then we can put it all together and really run with it and see how things are working with a full example. So to start off with, we already know sort of the base fundamental ideas of um, calling different locations in our program, right? Moving around to different labels in our application. So let me give you a really simple example. Suppose that we wanted to create a program that added two numbers together. I mean, we wanted that to be a function because maybe we might do it multiple times throughout our program. Well, in order to do this, we're gonna go ahead and start by moving some values into some registers that we want to be added. And really, you can make these values whatever you want. I'll just move into R0 and R1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to branch off to a function that's going to add the numbers together. And we're going to call that add to. So we'll call it add to. And then I'll define it here. And all this is going to do is it's just going to add the numbers together and store the result in R2. And there we have a very simple idea of a function. So when we run this, of course, it should work the way that we expect it to, right? We get one, three, we branch over to our add function, it adds the numbers together, we end up with four, and everyone is happy. Now, my question to you is, what if I wanted to do something slightly different? What if I wanted to continue execution directly after this function call? So what I mean by that is that maybe after this function call, I want to do something different, right? I want to, you know, move some more numbers into registers. You know, maybe I want to like move into R3, the value four, right? So if I want to do this, I have to have some way of coming back to this location after this function is called. Now, there are a few ways that we could achieve this sort of idea, right? Like I showed in um, a previous video, what we could do is we could branch after this add and we could branch to this location here. And then after that location, we can branch beyond the, the add to function so we don't actually run back into it. This creates a little bit of complexity and we don't really like that complexity. It's a little bit weird to follow. So in these sorts of situations where we're just calling this as a function, what we can do is we can add in what is called a return address. And with the return address, what we're able to do is we're able to return to the function where we started. So we're able to, at the end of this function, return back to the location directly after we called that function. So this is the idea of a return. So that's what we're going to take a look at here. We're going to take a look at how we can do this. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change this branch to a BL which means branch linked. And what that's gonna do is it's going to store the location that follows this branch inside of one of our registers, which is this one here, the LR register or link register. So without doing anything further, let me just show you what that looks like. So when we go to this point here, BL, you'll see that LR gets 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then C, right? What that location corresponds to is the address of the instruction that follows the branch. So you can see here at C, there's this move instruction, which is right after our branch. So you can see that what this link register stores is it stores the location directly after the call or branch to the function. So in order to make this work, after we finish this here, we should go back to the location that's stored inside of the link register. So in order to do this, we can use another instruction known as a BX. This will branch back to the location stored in a register. So in this case, we can branch back to LR, which will branch us back to the link register. So let's pull that all together and let's see what that looks like. When we do this, we move the values into our registers. 
we branch into the add function, you can see that it's storing C as our return location, which is this move instruction right after this branch. You'll see that we add the values together in R2, and then when we branch, it takes us back to this move instruction. So you can see that that actually worked. It brought us back to the location where we started. This mimics the sort of flow of a typical function, right? If you are familiar with higher level languages, when you have a function, you have a return, the return takes you back to where you started. This is the exact same idea, and this is what your higher level languages are doing in the background. When it translates into assembly, this would be the idea of what is happening with that translation. So this gives you a bit of an intuition behind how we actually do these branches with returns. Now I'm, I, I'm excluding a little bit of detail here. There, there's more things that need to happen to make this work completely functionally, right? Um, you know, if we have more complex programs, there's certain safeguards that we need to take in order to make this like as, as good as possible. However, for the time being, you have a good understanding of branching with the links, how that link register works and how to return back afterwards. So that's all we're going to talk about in this video. This gives you the fundamental ideas of functions and subroutines with returns. And now in the next video, I'm going to discuss a little bit more detail of how we can say preserve things before we move into these functions and then be able to utilize that to our advantage. So that's what we'll sort of go into next after this video.